Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 36. And in this tutorial, we are gonna take a look at styling tables. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys uh, maybe how to make this table look a little bit more pretty because right now uh, it uh, does look a little bit weird. Right, so I am actually zoomed in a little bit. Uh, you can see that was 200%. Uh, uh, so that's what your table should be looking like. Uh, but uh, to make it just a little bit more clear, I'm going to hit control and just zoom in here a little. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and style this table up. So uh, the first thing I wanna show you guys is if you select your table and then you add in a property of uh, border collapse and you set that equal to collapse, you can get rid of this like really terrible looking uh, double border. So now it's just a single border between uh, each one of the cells, which is obviously much, much better. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually want to go ahead and remove that border and add it in with CSS rather than an attribute. So let's go here, let's take out border from uh, the table. So let's remove that attribute, save this, go back over to CSS, and then I'm gonna select all table data, so all table cells and all table headings, and then we'll add the border around these. So let's go border uh, one pixel solid. And instead of using um, like a default black, let's go ahead and say uh, hash 999. So it's gonna be sort of a very light gray, right? Um, and uh, yeah, you can see that all we've done there is uh, change the color of the borders, but they're still uh, all there, right? Um, now let's take a look at uh, actually uh, styling some of the rows to be different colors. So in the previous tutorial, I showed you guys that you can use these um, T head and T body um, tags to uh, basically surround certain areas of your table, right? So you can actually style those. So you can say that everything within a T head, so you can go ahead and select T head uh, and just say that that needs to have a background of, I don't know, some light gray color like hashtag CCC. Um, and uh, hopefully that changes the background, right? So you can style the T head to be a different color and you can style the T body uh, to be uh, something like blue. So again, just back, uh, background, not background origin. And you can say that that needs to be something like blue and then you can take the next one, uh, which was T foot and uh, make that background red or something. All right, so you could play around with these and have different color tables like that. Uh, but uh, most of the time we don't usually style tables like this. I think um, a more modern way to style tables is to kind of make them a little bit more responsive. And in fact, we won't even use the T head and T body tags. So let's go ahead and just remove all of those. And I'm gonna take come over to the code and I'm gonna remove those from here as well. So let's remove T head and T body and T foot. Let's just get rid of all of those, right? So we can pull the footer back in. In fact, I don't even think we need that footer there, but um, yeah, uh, let's actually remove it, right? So let's save this now, come back over to the browser and you can see I've, I've just removed that last row, that last footer of my table, right? And uh, now let's start styling this to look a little bit more like a modern table would look. So uh, go over to your CSS, and then I'm going to select every uh, table row, but I want to only select the nth child. So let's um, type nth child here as a pseudo selector, right? And add in the parentheses. So we spoke about pseudo selectors uh, earlier on in this tutorial series. If you haven't um, checked that tutorial out, go back and check it out. But uh, nth child just allows us to select a specific child within our table. Uh, so if we say 2n, that'll select every second row. So n just basically says, please repeat this, and 2 basically says every second one, right? So let's save this now. And um, uh, what I'd like to do uh, now is add a background color to each one of those rows. So let's say background, and uh, we'll give it a color of hashtag CCC, all right? 
and that is going to change the background of every alternating, alternating row. So we have the first row is white, the second row is gray, um, but you can see because of the row span, these ones stay gray and the next row turns white and then the next one's gray again. And if I were to uh, go back over to this table and add um, one more row to this, and we can just change the name here to Jared, uh, what? Uh, I don't know, pick a country, <laughs> Angolan, <laughs> right? Uh, if we add another row here, you can see that that row is now white. So basically each of the rows alternates, um, especially if we get rid of uh, this row span here and uh, that row there, All right? Save this, come back to the browser, um, and that looks a lot, <laughs> like much, much better, right? Uh, so something else I'd like to do is um, make this table a little bit more responsive. So one of the ways we do that is to go over to CSS and wherever we have a table, we just give this a uh, width of 100% and that should uh, automatically make our table uh, sort of responsive. Uh, there is a little bit of a problem with this when it comes to actually looking at it on a, a mobile phone screen because they get really, really small. So you actually have to change the way your table gets laid out. Very complicated stuff. Um, but for now, if you just go ahead and put uh, width 100%, that'll make it responsive to uh, tablets and uh, desktops. Um, so basically the table always fits the uh, space it has. But yeah, when you get to like a phone screen, so parts of the table start uh, chopping off. Um, and uh, there's nothing you can really do about that except for displaying all the table rows, like one underneath the other, or table cells, one underneath the other, uh, which actually doesn't look all that good on a phone anyway. So there's one other thing I wanna show you guys before we end off this video, which is uh, gonna help with readability as well. Um, so having the alternating row colors at least helps you read uh, tables, especially when they get quite large or if uh, there's a, a large number of columns, right? But uh, there is something else you can do, which is add in another styling rule over here. So go ahead and select your table row and then use another pseudo class, which is hover. So basically, whenever I'm hovering over a row, I'd like to change the background color. So let's go ahead and say background and you can really select any color you like over here. It doesn't have to be a bright red color like this, but I'm just gonna hit red or uh, save this as red, all right? So let's go ahead and save this, come back over to the browser, hit refresh, and you can see nothing actually changes on my table right now, but as soon as I hover over a row, uh, that entire row then changes color um, to red. So uh, now basically, uh, if I want to make sure that I'm reading a specific um, row in a table, when I hover over it, I can make it turn red and then I know that this is actually the row that I'm hovering over. Uh, it just helps with readability, um, uh, like alternating the row colors also helped with readability. And um, yeah, I'm gonna jump to the end card now, so I'll see you guys in the next video. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design, and web development, and they'll teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field, and they'll do it within 12 weeks. So check out their website, the link is in the description below, and if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Special thanks to the guys whose names are on screen now. These guys contribute $5 or more on Patreon, and I really appreciate that. Uh, while you're still here, there are a few other things that you can do to help out. So follow me on social media and check out some more of my content and I'll see you guys next time.